What is going on, Wolfpack Savage here? In today's video, we're going to be spectating and breaking down and analyzing in depth a quads match. Now, I'm going to be talking about circle rotation, hopefully a lot, because I really want you guys to start learning how to position, as well as gunfights. This is quads. You're going to have to really start learning how to prioritize your targets, decide who you want to fight and who you don't want to fight. That way you stop getting third party. Whenever you guys get third party and you get shot in the back, it's because you put yourself in a bad position. But if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, join the Wolfpack today. Also leave a like on the video. Let's get this video through 1400 likes. And as always, if you guys are tired of playing by yourself and you want to start playing with some other people, join our Discord community. The link to that will be in the description below. And within that, you guys can find teammates and pull out some W's. And again, not everybody who watches these videos watches them to learn. A lot of people watch these videos so they can laugh. A lot of people watch these videos so they can take a technique. So there's many different things you guys can take from these videos but at the end of the day the objective of the game is to have fun right winning is also another objective for sure and getting kills yeah 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 for sure but have fun man and guess how you have fun in this game stop camping up like a little bitch right come on man get out there and start practicing getting better at the game so when the next battle royale drops you guys are already ahead of the curve and you're not going to be stuck in this i don't know what to do phase again that is another purpose of this series but without further ado let's go ahead and dive into the video all right here we are spectating ludwig and no it's not the real one this is a fake one and they have a little bit of action going on over the buy station now, money-wise, these guys are broke as shit. There is a recon objective here that someone has activated, so I would expect other other teammates to come in this area and try to win the fight. Now, our dude Lugwood's getting shot from the right-hand side, but he gives zero shits. Why does he give zero shits? Because he wants his KD to go up, which doesn't matter in a battle royale, despite what you may think. And, and, and noting that, stop going places asking people what their KD is, man. Ask what their win-loss ratio is. That's what really is important in a battle royale, not what your KD is. Guess what? If you have 100 wins and a 4 KD, Come on, man. You're messing up somewhere. But he's going to go for the execution. Risk getting shot in the side. Fortunately, he does not die. But it's still not the play to go with. You guys want to outplay the situation, especially this early in the game. Is there a chance they may have a self-res? Yes, there's a chance they may have picked one up. But it's not that likely. So the chance of him actually getting a self-res is meh. But now we have the high ground. Now we just got to find the enemies. We just got to find out where they are. We do have a scavenger objective that these guys are doing. So good on them for that. They landed right on a scav and they know exactly what they need to do. They need to get money. But our dudes did get the scavenger objective completed. And now they have enough to get their loadout drop. It's pretty self-explanatory. We really don't need to touch on the uh, loadout drops that much in upcoming videos. Because I think I've gotten that message across, right? But we are in a weird area. We have promenade to our left-hand side that has a good line of sight on us. We do have hospital to our right as well. And there's a helicopter landing on the rooftop. So from this position, what should we do? Well, we just called a loadout drop, so there's a lot of red smoke. So of course the enemy team that landed here knows we're here. So they're gonna make some kind of aggressive push to us. As you can see, this dude's jumping off the roof like Rambo, and they're gonna try to fight us out. We are at a disadvantage because of our position. They have the high ground, they have the ridge they can peek over, and we're kind of out in the open. So let's see how they play it out. You could decide to push it, you could decide to bail if you wanted to. I'd probably play this out, but it really just depends on what the enemy team does. If, all, if everyone from that team jumps off this roof and comes on this one, then duh, all you got to do is run around the bottom of the building, go up the zip line, and shoot them from the higher ground, and then later on, of course, take their chopper. But in situations like these, there is no right or wrong answer. It really just depends on what the enemy does and what your teammates do as well. The point of gunfights and quads and trios and duos is waiting for the enemy to make a mistake. The moment an enemy puts himself out there and gets himself knocked, then you can start baiting his teammates and other things like that. When you see two good squads go against each other, that's all they're doing. They're sitting there waiting for someone to make a mistake. That way they can get a pick. And once they get the pick, then they can push and capitalize on it. So we've got two of the teammates jumping off the rooftop. Go to the rooftop right above us. We need to get out of our loadout real quick because they're going to be looking over really fast. Now, there's a zip line on the right-hand side. I do not recommend taking. We are also getting shot. That was crazy to me. We're going we're, we're gonna to talk about a lot right here. Team wipe. All right. All right. So we knew that they were going to push the way they jumped off that roof and just came right at us. That's a situation right there. We need to capitalize on. They put themselves vulnerable by jumping off of the roof and leaving their high ground. If I were them, I would have been on the roof. I would have looked down and shot the guy that was in the little bush area because they had a great line of sight. But instead of doing that, the enemies jumped off, pulled a full out Rambo and they got themselves killed. Now, we played this wrong. Ludwig played this completely wrong. We had one knock, two knocks, and instead of looking for the last teammates, he started going for executions. Even after those first two guys did get executed, he came into the tent, and he started spraying at a body that was already executed too. That just shows you that the players are really hyper-focused on getting the kill and not outplaying the fights. 
Stop focusing on kills and start focusing on winning fights. There's a huge difference. If you guys can get three of the four guys and then he squad wipes you, I'm glad you got a three KD out of that fight, but guess what? You lost the match and in return, now you gotta return to the lobby and start over again. So stop hyper focused on executes. There is no reason to do it when you're in the middle of combat. Again, if you're sniping at long range or they can't get to you and you're safe and things like that, that that's a completely different situation. But if they're on your face and they're pushing you aggressively and you're already down a teammate, you guys need to go ahead and, and outplay the situation. Stop worrying about how many kills you can get and how many executions you can get. There's another guy who is a random and that's also a team wipe. All right, but we're in hospital. So Savage, what do we do? We don't know what to do. We just got kills. There's no one else here. How do we decide where we're going to go next? Well, we got a vehicle driving to us, but even if we didn't have a vehicle driving to us, you can make your decision based on how you want to play the game. Do you want to find out where all the circles are at? That way you can start predetermining the end game and then rotate based off of that. If the answer is yes, then go ahead and go for recon objectives. It's a great tool. I really wouldn't recommend a scav objective right now just because we have enough money and I really wouldn't want to waste my time we could go for bounties, but unfortunately there's no bounties here. So again, you can go for the recon objective or you can hunt down a bounty or we can pull up the big map and we can find out what compounds closest to us that may bring us the most kills. And that answer would probably be promenade or across the mountain over towards apartments and then rotate to hangars. Your cluster of players are always going to be around superstore, airport, hangars, uh, apartments, boneyard, storage town, things like that. That's where the majority of players are going to be at. So if you're wanting a high kill game, that's where you guys are going to want to be. So see what this team does. They may try to fight these guys in the vehicle. The vehicles may try to park and get that helicopter. Helicopters are pretty uh pretty wanted. People love their choppers. This dude's just driving circles around hospital. Not really sure what the hell he's doing. There's another vehicle to our southeast side. And I want you guys to notice. So two vehicles are driving around us and Ludwig is going back and forth because he can't make his mind up on what he wants to do. He sees one vehicle is closer to him, so he starts chasing that one. The moment the other vehicle gets closer, he turns around and starts chasing that one. And then once the other vehicle's coming back, he starts chasing that one. I like the fact that he's trying to make audibles, but again, we're just wasting time here. I'd want to be on the high ground. I'd get to the zip line and get up top. That way you can shoot down on the enemies. Um, plus, the last thing I want them to do is have the ability to get out of the vehicle, get up the zip line, and go up to the top of this roof right here because they'll have a great advantage point on this team. But... The, the second vehicle did jump out. Blue's in combat with him right now. He gets a double kill on that squad. So it's a whole different team. That was just a duo. We still have this red vehicle driving in circles around us. Now, as far as... Okay, he jumped out. As far as that enemy's concerned, I don't know what he's doing. Baiting for shots is fine to see if the enemies are here. But you don't need to drive around 19 times to bait for shots. Just one little sweep real quick. If no one shoots at you, then you can assume you're relatively safe. But it's still not that good of a technique because just like you see, they were baiting for shots. They thought it was safe. They got complacent because of it. They came in the building and we pinched them and flanked them and got the kill. Also, not to mention, he did bail away instead of going for the res or outplaying the situation. Now, he didn't have to go for an instant res because there are other enemies here. But he could have outplayed this area in particular instead of going out that back door and waited for the enemies to come execute his boy. He played it extremely wrong, not to mention he did put his back vulnerable to the other teammate. Now, in a position like that, he is by himself. He probably was going to die anyway because these guys did pinch him just like him and Green had pinched their teammate originally. So they both had the right idea of coming in at different angles and pinching the enemies. Um, but it cost Ludwig his life. And again, I don't really think him outplaying the situation any differently would have come with a different result just because of how they pushed that building. All right, but Goldsworthy is actually destroying right now. He just got a double kill inside, um, but it's not a team wipe. So we know there's someone else here. So Campos is going to try to go up and get his loot. I wouldn't even worry about looting this garbage. Just go in through the door and grab your stuff. Why are we wasting time picking up some other random crap? Just grab your loot, grab your stuff, and start fighting with weapons you're confident with. Does he have a secondary? I don't think he picked up a secondary, did he? Just like we called it, there was another person here. And again, just watch the kill feed. If it doesn't say team wipe, for those of you that are new to the game, that means there's still someone relatively close. They might not be here. They may be across the map doing whatever it is. But if it doesn't say team wipe, that should give you guys some kind of indication that there's another player alive. I don't know what he's doing. Oh, he's got his, he's got his sticks. Okay, he wants his Cali sticks. Hopefully we get some bomb ass gameplay with some sticks. That'd be nasty. He's got a very good build on the uh, AMAX as well. Although I, I will say I do love the Ranger 4 grip on the AMAX. I don't know why, but I love it. Things just nasty, nasty, nasty. All right, here we are again. Campos is just kind of running around in circles. There may be enemies here. Oh, there they is. Hey, good UAV. There he's dropping off. If he would have had a gun out instead of his sticks, he would have got that kill. He still might. 
especially since his teammates flanking from the backside. But <laughs> he would have got that kill if he would have MP5 out easily, easily. This is one of the reasons why I never recommend sitting in areas like this, because when you do fight the enemies, it's going to take a long time for you guys to be able to to be able to kill people camping on rooftops. Not to mention, it's going to be very hard for you guys to push them. Now, one thing they could do instead of going up that ladder like like Goldsworthy just did is there's a zip line on the side of this building, zip line to the top, get on the roof and come down on top of the enemy and get the kill that way. Pushing directly up to try to get the kill is, is suicide, honestly. Um, even if you get the stun, I really don't feel comfortable pushing that because if he's just holding the ladder, even if you make it up, he'll probably outshoot you. So again, know the layout of the buildings. Or they can take the elevator shaft. I mean, there's so many ways they can get up there. Granted, there may be another enemy that didn't pop up on radar. There may be. But if you're going to be this hyper-focused on this fight, you need to be willing to take risks and make moves in order to win the fights fast. Because again, we just sit down here closing all the doors, waiting for the enemy to mess up. I'm all for waiting for mistakes, but if we're going to be waiting minutes and minutes and minutes, again, it's just taking away from other kills that you could possibly get. Again, I'm not going to lie. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of fighting here at all. I usually try to avoid it. But if you're going to commit, you need to commit. All right, but here we are spectating Goldsworthy who just came back from the Gulag courtesy of Campos. And here we are still in this area. We have not killed the guy who just killed Goldsworthy earlier. So it looks like we may be going back to that spot. I wonder if he's going to push again. He might. He might. He's got 10 kills with 92 left. This could be a possible 30 bomb or even a 40 bomb. He's got a lot of kills in the beginning. But again, if they play like this and they overstay their welcome, and they sit here for too long, they're not going to end up getting any kills. And this goes back to the point of you guys are a lot better than you give yourself credit for. You just got to get out of the mindset of sitting up for way too long. I don't know where this dude went. There he is. There he is. Hancock and Bartlett came back. They did buy their teammate back. That was what the red flare was for. Um, and unfortunately for that squad, they did die. But luckily, Campos and Ludwig were right next to each other. Not a fan of him long parachuting like that. I definitely would have jumped off the roof and pulled it last second. Again, if you're floating in the air and you're parachuting, you're easy beam. So unless you have cover or unless you pull your shoot at last second, it's just not a good play. Oh, no. Ooh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, brother. All right, good reaction time on getting the hell out of there. A lot of people in that position would stop and panic and try to shoot the enemy. Just because you see the enemy, just because he's shooting at you, doesn't mean you have to fight. If you're in a terrible position like we were, you got to bail out of it. He knew the building layout. He knew there was a door under him, and he instantly dove off and went through the door to get safe. I'm not sure why. <laughs> now, I will say, I will give credit to that team. They did push across in the open area. They had to cross an open ravine, which was wide open. And the enemy team knew that there were going to be people in hospital, not just because they hurt us, but because that's how people play normally. So as soon as they started running across, we started shooting at them. They got some shots on us, which suppressed us a little bit and then allowed them to get time to get in the vehicle and dip the hell out. They were in a bad position. They got the vehicle and they dipped. There's nothing wrong with running from a fight if you're in a bad spot. And that's exactly what they did. Hopefully they're going to reposition and then gatekeep us. And that, that's exactly what it looks like is going to happen. They're going to stop over at Red Roof. Actually, that's not really a good gatekeeping spot. I wouldn't, I wouldn't consider this a gatekeep because they're still out of bounds and they're relatively in still a bad spot too. They may just go to this building to camp up, which is not the play, not the play. We have a big berth in front of us to the south. We had a vehicle behind us to the north. Now, I want you guys to notice this right now. This is this is bad. Let's let's I'm gonna hit the rewind a little bit. And I want to talk about this pushing buildings and pushing staircases. As you guys are going up staircases, you need to always be scanning as you're walking up. For instance, when you walk up here, you know what can see us right now that we can't see? Behind us, right? Behind us. Watch when he turns. This area right here, you can have clear line of sight on enemies coming up if your back's to them. So as you're going up the stairs, instead of just running and staring at the wall, start looking and turning as you're going up. Clear the area. Don't just allow it. Just don't allow the enemy to shoot you in the back. Now, these guys, I think they're here. They may be here. They may have rolled out. There's some broken glass. They may be here. But if they are, it's going to be very bad. Notice how you turn around real quick to watch that. That's what you should do as you're going upstairs always. <laughs> what? <laughs> Bro, the moment he peeked, he got f***ed up, man. There's no strategy to that one. That dude's reaction time is just flawless, bro. Flawless. The enemy. I want to spectate him. I want to spectate that dude. His reaction time was insane. Now, they ended up moving up to a different building. Now they have us baited. They have us baited and they, they dropped the switch and bait. They did. 
They jumped out of the vehicle. They played us. They made us think that we were in this building. In reality, they went on the outside building, which is kind of gatekeeping because, of course, we chased the bait. We thought they were in here. The circle's pushing up, and now we have to move out and get safe. But they're on the further building away from the zone, so they're going to sit there as long as they can and wait for us to run in the open and be vulnerable and then kill us. But not all is lost for this team. They could jump in this vehicle and drive away. But again, what do I always say? It's very easy to shoot people out of vehicles, so they still... This team may be at its end. It may be at its end. So good job on the other enemy team. Honestly, I thought they were just going to be camped up in here too. But they ended up outplaying the situation. Uh, doing the 200 IQ and gatekeeping our squad. What a pog, bro. Yeah. And you know, it's just simple things like that. Right? Just very minute corrections to the way you play. Notice how they, just the way they baited that building and moved out to a different one was absolutely stunning. And that didn't happen by accident. They could have driven off and been safe and gatekeep this from within the next zone. Bro, I'm gonna be honest with you guys right now. This is not sponsored. Just, just FYI. Just plugging you guys in. Great value products are lit. Their water's bomb. Their hostess cupcakes are bomb. Great value chips at Walmart. Fuck. <laughs> oh, hoo -hoo! them bitches fire. And no, it's not sponsored again. I'm just giving you one bro move to another. All right. But let's get back on subject. But we've got 60. I'm sorry. We've got 58 enemies. And this team that ended up doing the 200 IQ move to the last squad. They're kind of about to have that reversed on them. Honestly, there's an enemy right here and he's in the open. Very bad spot for him to be at. But I wouldn't assume he's alone. And the reason why I don't assume he's alone is because he's sitting in the open in quads. No player is that dumb. The only way you're going to have balls big enough to sit in the middle of the open and shoot at an entire team is if you have teammates on these other rooftops, right? So I would expect uh, maybe a full squad, honestly. So what do we do now, Savage? We're in a terrible spot. We're in the worst position ever on earth, period, right? So what you need to do in this position is play slow. You need to slow it down. You are gate kept, yes, but this building is still kind of safe. So you can still play this building. Don't get too amped. Don't try to push across the street. Don't get up here and try to head glitch this because if they are on the roof, you're going to be extremely vulnerable from that angle. Sorry, guys. I forgot to use the red one. But the rooftop has a beautiful angle on this hill. Yes, you could head glitch this for the guys down under. But again, if they are up here, they have a great angle on you. So I do not recommend getting up here. Again, I do not recommend just bulldozing over the street and trying to get safe and fight them as you're fighting the circle. Just play this area, play this roof, play the building to your advantage. Slow it down. Try to win the gunfight. Once you get a pick, then you guys can move across because the other enemies will be distracted with getting the res off and things like that. Just play the situation to your advantage. But here we are going up the staircase again. Not a fan of this. Um, let's, let's see what happens. All right. All right. So no one's on the roof right now. We do have a great opportunity to shoot the squad. There are two enemies. There's a sniper glint over here by a blue mark, or there was. And then there's a red mark right here, a ping. So there's two enemies that we can see. Now notice how he's tunnel vision right now, right? He's in gas and he's not safe, right? All he's got to do is move three feet to the left to be safe. Savage, if he moves, he'll get shot. Well, he's going to get shot right now anyway, because what? there's three guys right here. One, two, three, three enemies. So this is not the play. What you want to do is go prone. There's a lip on this little ramp that they're on that they can utilize as cover. Sitting here trying to take three guys on at the same time. No bueno at all, especially while you're in the gas. You see this lip right here? Go prone, played up, do whatever you need to do. Outplay the situation using your brain, not your crosshair. But unfortunately, it looks like he's going to try to challenge these three enemies by himself. Meanwhile, his two teammates dip the hell out. Again, this is not the play at all. All three of these guys should have played this to their advantage, pop it up, shooting the enemy, and slowly moving themselves across the street as they go crouch or prone behind this lip. Start peeking up, taking shots, go prone, played up, hide, reposition, relocate, pop up again, and outplay using your brain again, not your crosshair. But he died. His two teammates are turning tail and running away, which puts them at a disadvantage as well because they're going to have to go up the hill with their backs extremely vulnerable. And if this team is aggressive, which they are, all four of them are pushing like a mother, um, they're going to end up shooting the back. And I want you guys to notice how they push. They all push together. What the hell is happening? Gerardo, what are you doing? Savage, you're being mean to Gerardo. Stop it. No, I will not. Bro, Gerardo, your team just got a, your teammate just got a knock. It's now a 2v3 if he's able to get the execution as well. Um, you can outplay the situation, but instead we're running away, get in the vehicle. Get, why? You have guns for a reason. Oh, this build though, bros. Look at this. No. Absolutely not. But Purple has the right idea. Vargas wants to outplay the situation. He's in a 1v3 now. It would be a lot more viable if he had his teammate there. Um, 
but we'll see how we'll see what happens. He's going back to him um, again. That's a very easy outplay right there. They had a building to their advantage, and the enemies were pushing up in the open. If you look at this map right here, there's a wide open area. That's where the enemies were pushing. We had the building. We had the cover. All we had to do is peek and shoot them from two different angles while they're in the open and get an easy triple kill. Then we can get some money from them. Then we can get some loot from them. We could have plates. We could have cash, buy our teammates back, get UAVs, cluster strikes, whatever you want. Sky's the limit. Again, no win to bail from a fight. No win not to bail from a fight. This is just a little bit of a panic situation. Not to mention, it looks like Blue's going to be landing on his shit. Hopefully he doesn't. Hopefully he doesn't. Hopefully Blue lands wherever we're heading to and hopefully we're talking to our team or pinging on the map where we actually want to go the circle is rotating further to the north so when you get north there's a team up at the buy station on the left hand side there's a team within construction because they're shooting at us right now and there's also oh no brother no as far as driving through construction look you were committed to the vehicle Again, I wouldn't have left that fight. If you would have fought that fight, your rotation could have been a lot more planned out. You could have been a lot more patient with it, and you could have avoided this entire area. Um, you drove through a compound that usually isn't that highly occupied, so I'm not gonna so I'm not gonna fault him for that. It's very rare you see people camping in construction, but they were, and it got your boy killed, and you are now hurting on plates, and you're also separated from Blue. And I'm not again. I'm not sure why Blue decided to land on his loot. I'm really not. You want to work as a team. I get you want your guns. I get that. But when you're so far away and your teammates driving all the way across the map, that's just not a play. If you're relatively close, a compound or two away, then sure, go ahead, grab your loot and work your way back to your team. But they're literally across the map from each other now. So now it's a 2v55 situation and, uh, and they're nowhere to be found. Pick up the most wanted objective. I'm not against it. Pick up the most wanted objective and drive around. It's not the ballsiest play. It's not a manly play. But again, if you're, if you're hurting for squirting, if you're hurting for your teammates, um, do what it takes to win the game. Get them back. But unfortunately, he went back to the vehicle that was already almost blown up. And the guy's disabled on the roof. And they got shot, right? They got shot. Whenever you're in areas like Promenade, Downtown, um, Boneyard, any major city, you're always going to have rooftop campers. So try your greatest. So try to the best of your ability to avoid driving around those areas. And we're in an in-game situation or very near approaching it. So now what do we do in a position where by ourselves, it's a 1v everything. We're a lone wolf out here and I'm terrified to play. What do we do? Well, we're already in promenade and there is a most wanted bounty next to us again. So grab the most wanted bounty, but you're going to have to move out. You're going to have to move fast. You don't have a vehicle to your advantage. So you're going to have to move on foot or you could camp. I don't recommend camping buildings like bank. I don't. You can't bank. It's got multiple ways up, multiple ways down. You're going to get shit on by a full squad for sure. For sure, there's an enemy on mini map. We don't even notice it. The enemy's right here on mini map. He's probably pushing across to us right now, and we're super hyper focused on everything else. All right, vehicle is pushing up from the southeast. Now, I don't recommend sitting on top of shit like this, especially in these areas, because of all these rooftops. We're just basically saying, guys, fuck me up. All we're doing right now is putting ourselves out there to get headshotted. No bueno. I, but Savage, he wants to see the vehicle. You don't need to see the vehicle. It's the same vehicle it's always been. It looked exact same. Probably a blue paint job with the stripes and all that other crazy shit. Who cares, right? Who cares? But I know he wants to get that most wanted bounty, but a vehicle just pulled up there who probably wants that most wanted bounty too. Okay. Something you don't do. Don't shoot at enemies when you have another plan. I know his plan is to get that most wanted bounty. It's pinged on the map. I know that's his idea. I know it is. So why are we shooting at other enemies coming in trying to get easy kills when we have to put ourselves in a bad position and push a team using stealth, right? If we shoot right here, guess what? Now this enemy knows we're here and he's going to kill us. So now probably everyone around here knows exactly where we're at and we got to push the zone to get safe. Weird! <laughs> That's the strangest shit ever. How did he know we were there? He must be hacking, right? Every time a streamer dies, they always scream hackers. So it's got to be true. No way did he know where our dude was. It's not like he was just shooting at everything around and standing up in the middle of everything, letting everyone know where we're at. No, he didn't. Okay. Yeah, he did. That's exactly what he did. That's exactly what he did. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. No when to fight, no when not to fight. If you're pushing a team and you know you need to be stealthy, don't just pick fights because it's easy kills. If you want to get a high KD, if you're really worried about KD, go play multiplayer. This is Battle Royales is not meant for KD. I don't give a shit what anyone says. Win-loss ratio is everything in a BR. Everything. 
We're going back into the building. Not a terrible play. You're going to get a little gas damage, but you can always leave the other door, change your angle of approach, and hopefully surprise the enemy. And that's kind of what he looks like he's about to do. Now, don't go for the execution. You're in the open. You need to push that and get safe because he's going to have teammates on the roof just like he does now. All right, while he's suppressed, while you're suppressing fire, your other teammate should look on the rooftop first, see if there's another enemy. And if not, there's no other enemies peeking. Make a run for fire station. Grab the big Bertha and come back and pick us up. That's the best play in the situation. Suppressive fire is key to winning quads or trios. Notice how he suppressed the enemy. Nothing happened. And now it looks like these guys may die. Oh, and they took Big Bertha. And there you have it, boys. But here we are again, playing the edge of the circle. Not, uh, I, I'm going to stop saying I'm not a fan of it. You guys know I'm not a fan of playing the edge of the circle. But don't play the edge of the circle. All right, we got two heartbeats on the heartbeat sensor. Guy right in front of us. He still went for the buy station. You saw him in the heartbeat. If you're going to use the heartbeat, you got to listen to it, man. You got to listen to it. Don't go for the execution. Save your ammo. Okay, now we're going to be pushing out there in a 1v2 with 15 bullets on our reservoir. You can't see it because I'm blocking it, but that's why I'm telling you guys. And, of course, mid-pop the reload, not hugging back to cover and peeking while he's mid-reloading. He ended up dying, and now all those downs and all that pretty shit was for nothing. They still have three people on their team. And there's a buy station right there, so if someone's got a gas mask, they could buy them back. Doesn't look like anyone's got gas mask though. All right, we have enemies fighting next to us. And again, we're playing the edge of the circle. Green's got his back to the guy right next to us, and that's just from lack of callouts. We heard the guy right here. We heard the suppressed shots right here. So he should have pinged it or at least told his teammates who didn't hear it. Hey, man, don't turn your back to this dude. Hug that tree and help me get an angle on this guy. And now Hagger is dead, and it looks like this dude's team is going to take us out because we're again, we're again finishing the enemy off. We're finishing them off. Someone in my comments said, stop saying execution. So I'm going to stop saying executing. I'm going to start saying finishing off. All right, so here we are expecting a whole new a whole new team. And you, you guys find it weird that whenever I post a video and we're playing the edge of the circle like we are, we always jump from team to team to team to team. It's like everyone's always dying on the edge. Weird, right? It's almost like maybe you shouldn't play the edge of the circle until it's the very, very end of the game. And here we are once again changing, changing teams. All right, so here we are spectating um, the squad, De La 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 La, De La La La, I'm going to call him Day. We're getting sniped from behind, and they think there's an enemy team in here. We don't know because we just started spectating them, but I would imagine it being one of the last compounds in, there's probably a team in here, so play it very safe. <laughs> Lo and behold, there he is. No, Whoa! Whoa! What are you shooting at, bro? The staircase isn't going to hurt you. I promise they don't bite. His teammate just went down. Instead of pushing up there, going full-on Rambo, and what could be, what could be a 1v4, um, I would have played the wall, baited them down to come for the execute, maybe, and then hopefully kill them off. But out playing the situation with these guns right here, it's going to be very difficult. So he doesn't have a claymore up there. They can't move this claymore right next to you. No. And on to the next squad. <laughs> Jesus. After the video, someone in my comment section, let me know how many teams we spectated. I'd love to know. So here are spectating a trio. It was three of them camping up here, just like people do. They love camping. And you know, I'm not really against it for this reason here. There's a jug. There's a juggernaut. There's been a huge increase in juggernauts on the map lately. You get them almost every match. It's a very messed up thing to add to the game, but no. You want to try to damage the juggernaut as much as possible. And since we have those windows to our advantage, you want to shoot the juggernaut and get them as weak as possible. Because if you ignore the juggernaut, which he's, by the way, right here, if you ignore the juggernaut, he's going to come at you full health and there's nothing you can do. So damage the jug while you can, especially when you have safety and an angle on them. Don't just leave the building to run out in the open. There is an enemy here. We're going to try a third party. I understand you want to get the kill again or even two kills. Okay, the play ended up working out. I'll give him that. But he went to finish them both off at the same time and he got shot in the back. Start out playing the situation. This is like the fifth time this match. We've seen somebody die because in the middle of finishing off an enemy, it's just dumb. So we got two downs. It looked like it was going to be really good. It looked like it was actually momentum was going to turn for us and we got none of the kills. We got none of the kills because they all self res They all got rezzed. And here, homeboy Meserve is sitting in a building. He's not looking at the juggernaut. He's not thinking about nothing. He didn't even go to help our teammate. Ladies and gentlemen of the wolf pack, here we are in a 1v14 situation. There's a juggernaut in play to our southwest. There's a team in the house marked on yellow mark, and there's going to be people over by the buy station to our east. You can almost guarantee that. How do we outplay this situation right now? Well, we need to absolutely lose our mind and get twisted. This guy's got a gold gun. He's obviously cracked out of his mind. 
Here we go. $15,000. We're pushing across the open to go to the buy station where we know people are going to be over here. We hear the gunshots, but he doesn't care because he's so fucking twisted out of his mind. I don't know how he lost that fight, but he did die. You know, even the best players, even the best players make mistakes. Yeah, I wouldn't have pushed that. I would not have pushed that. Let your team be dead. We knew there's a squad over here. We knew there's actually two squads because there were shots going on. That was just not the play. Sometimes you're gonna be put in positions where you have to try to outplay um, a solo quads. But ladies and gentlemen, here we are in a 4v6 situation and we gotta get across. There's three enemy teams left. There's a team to the Northwest shooting at us right now. Actually, our homeboy just called a cluster strike on him, I believe. He did, so they're suppressed. Now is the time to try to push across and get the safety while the jug is messing with that team in the house. And Flores gets the knock, gets a double knock, a triple. Savage, I don't like using clusters at the end of the game. It's a waste of money. You're stupid. You're an idiot. No. Clusters are awesome at the end of the game. It suppresses fire. It suppresses an enemy from shooting you. And it can also get a squad wide. Look at that weird. But we have a jug who's shooting at somebody. I'm not sure exactly who's shooting at. But we're not in a very bad position right now. Right now, we just need to rely on where the next circle is going to go to. This is a 4v1v1. All we got to do is take out one enemy in the yellow house, the juggernaut in the window of the other house. This is a very easy play. One jug against four of us. No way in hell is he going to have... No way in hell is he going to be good enough to outplay that. All right, your boy dropping the plate box. I absolutely love it. This team is screwed. Now, if juggernaut gets the favor and the circle goes to the southwest, we still have a chance to kill him with the amount of gunfire we have and the amount of players we have. But if it comes our way, all we got to do is sit behind this rock and take our damn time and play it safe. This is an easy win for our dude Flores and the squad. I love this. I love it. I remember, guys, there's a guy inside. Of course, the Juggernaut right there. There's the other player right there leaving the yellow building. Instant kill. Now it's a 4v1. You can Juggernaut all you want. You can't outplay the situation, brother. Your gun's not that accurate. It's what you get for being a Jug. All you're doing is laying the Abitol. Flores just absolutely hyper-focused and tunneled up on it. He needs to be looking while he's running through. I love the fact he's trying to get to the wall to get safe. And again, because of the inaccuracy from the Juggernaut's guns, good luck getting a squad wipe with that bitch. But now the Jug has to slow walk, fighting the circle across the open. We should be helping our team try to suppress the enemy and get the kill, jump on this vehicle, get a better angle, and blow this dude away. Again, at this range, that gun's not going to be the greatest. There we go, jumping on the car. Trying to look for him. There's his head right there, bro. We're blowing him away. And there he is. Come on, baby. Using nades, using everything we can, playing inside the gas to go around and get a different angle on the enemy. I love the plays. I love it. Don't get yourself killed. We're kind of putting ourselves out there. Oh, no. Oh, how the tides have turned. Oh, GG. But guys, again, the purpose of this video is to put you in other players' shoes and kind of just learn from their mistakes. That way you guys can learn some things and take it to Warzone and get better as a player. But I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you leave a thumbs up. Let's get this video to 1,400 likes. Subscribe today. And as always, until next time, good luck in Warzone. Thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you leave a thumbs up on it. Check out one of these two videos over here. And as always, subscribe by clicking that button there. You have a good one. And until next time, keep on improving.